Now maybe the story is true, and maybe it ain't, but it's about crafty old Jack of the Tales, who was a tricky fellow in the old world, and continued to be so when he followed us over to this country. When the War of Yankee Aggression broke out, which those of low education continue to call the American Civil War, Jack, always a restless sort, got in his mind that he could take advantage of such a grand adventure. He thought he might be able to marry himself a rich southern belle, if only he earned some renown in battle. So putting on gentlemen airs and a fine manner of speech, Jack came down south and lied up a mess of imaginary estates and aristocratic relations, so as to list with the Louisiana Volunteers as a captain of infantry. Well, Jack never got his glory, because the war didn't turn out all that good, at least not for the southern gentry. When it was clear to Jack that the South was lost, he lied some more about a dying mother in order to be granted early muster. Get out, you scurrilous imposter! I expect his boss, Kono, was more of a mind to let Jack go, because he was a deft hand with a deck of cards, and the Kono was tired of always losing his wages to him. You ones all take care of yourselves now. Take the road, Jack. It's longer but safer. Don't cut through yonder swamp because it's witched with all manner of vile critter. Maybe Nick Slick himself. Shit, fireboy. I ain't afraid of no Hanks. Maybe it was true that he wasn't afraid. Or maybe he avoided the road because it was even more dangerous. All men of cutthroat bands, renegades, deserters, and near the rails roamed the crumbling south in those days. Whatever the reason, Jack did cut across the bio. We loved each other then, Lorena, more than we ever dared to do. Well, I'll be a suck egg mule. What's an old coot like Yoon's doing all alone away out here in the middle of a swamp? Playing poker all with myself. Take my mind off my empty belly. Set yourself down for a spell, young fella, and play a few hands with me. So maybe I can win me some of them tasty vitals off you. Well, I sure look like a bit of poker, but it doesn't look to me like humans got nearly a thing to bet with. Who knows? Maybe I'm the king of old Siam, and got me all sorts of treasure stashed away in my sack here. You just bet what you are mine to, and I'll match it up. Well, I guess that'll have to do. Deal the cards. Yo, bet, young fella. I reckon I'll open with a mess of crusty, fresh-baked bread. I bet you sure want to win that, huh? This is one game of cards that didn't turn out so well for our boy Jack. The skinny old swamp rat had him a run of cards like old King David had him a run of rives. They was all lovely, and they came by the bushel. Yo, bet again. I know, I know it is! You don't gotta keep telling me time and again! I'm betting my last boot against getting the other one back. And this time I got you, old river pirate, cause I got a full house, king full of trays. Dumb's good cards for sure, boy. But I expect four little twos is still just a mite better. Dang it, you done cleared me out, you old buzzard! You don't wanna play no more? How? I ain't got doodly squat set my pants and ain't about go through the swamp buck ass naked. That's not everything you got, boy. You still got your soul. How about if we play one last hand? Your soul against everything I have here. My stuff and your stuff combined. So that's what this is all about. I should have recognized you right off, Mr. Slick. Where's your horns and tails and clothed hooves? Stick to the subject. Is we gonna have one more hand? My dear Nick, even if you was wins this time, you's got nothing but you's trash. But if ends I win, I'ma take everything's you's got, like you's a promised. Even that magical bag you stuffed all into. Oh yeah, Nicky, I figured that much out by my own self. I seen you stuffing more and more in yonder sack, but it didn't get no fuller. How many cards you taking? I think I'll stick with these. Thank yous all the same. Well, my two draw filled in my ace high flush. But that don't be for one kind like you showed me last hand, old Nick. Four jacks. Dang it, you done tricked me somehow. <laughs> Nonsense. Who could trick the devil himself? So, how's this work?
Old Nick never did figure out how he was outfoxed. Some say Jack was just a better cheater. Camp Town Racetrack, five miles long, hold the deed all day. Jack was known to boast, at times, when he was deep into his cups, that he never did pick up a deck of cards where he couldn't deal himself all four jacks, whenever he liked. Glory be. Say what you will about old Nick Slick. He never went back on no bargain. Once made, he told Jack the magic words that would make anything go into the bag, which would never get filled up. Hey, piggy piggy, clickety clack, get into my sack. Y'all are gonna make me one fine and fancy supper, Mrs. Picky. And maybe I'll get lucky twice and find me someone here to cook you up for me. Hello? Gallant, here are the wars here. Anyone home? Anyone own these nice fat chickens? Then y'all won't mind nothing if I help myself to a few. Hey, chicky chicky, clickety clack, get into my sack. Hello? Jack searched the mansion high and low, looking for anyone who might be there to make him welcome and cook up his dinner for him. Ain't nobody here at all. With all the robbers and brigands roaming about, it was deeply odd to find a rich estate, even one as run down as this, left all alone. Should I just make myself at home then? until he looked in the last corner bedroom of the western wing. Hello? Oh, my. Hello, sir. Welcome to Saramore, my family's ancestral home. I'm Sally Cornwellis. Uh, I'm Jack. I'm a... Decorated hero of the war? Yes, I know. I heard you from the moment of your rather boisterous arrival. Then why didn't you answer nothing? A young lady of good breeding doesn't scream out her greetings like some uneducated hooligan. Then why didn't you come out to walk me proper, then? Because a debilitating sickness has come over me, and I'm quite unable to move from my bed. You are sick? Don't fret. It's not contagious. At least it's only affected members of my family before. Where are they? Your family? All gone now. Victims of the same mortal affliction. I'm the last of the Cornwellis line. No gentleman would have me, knowing that my condition would deteriorate until I was left like this. We have the reputation of being cursed. I'm surprised you were brave enough to venture onto our lands. We're rumored to be haunted, don't you know? Ain't the slaves? All run off or sold long ago. My nan stayed with me, of course. Brave and loyal nan. But with death only hours away from now, I set her free this morning. Yoon's doomed to die? Within an hour or two before nightfall, most likely. I'm resigned to it now. The last of the pain went away days ago. That's horrible news. Yoon's the most lovely woman I ever did see. You're very complimentary, sir. Yoon shouldn't have to die before Yoon's ever did live. We can't choose our own fate. Hey, I don't suppose you want a last tumble first before the reaper comes to take you. Excuse me? I ain't had a woman in three years, not counting whores, of course, and since you don't have no plans for the afternoon... Are you suggesting I indulge in carnal congress with you? I intend to go virtuous to my lord. You're no gentleman, sir. And let me also point out that you're obviously no southern man either. Your counterfeit accent comes and goes more frequently than a March breeze. Oh, yeah. I guess I got so used to aping the speech of you people down here, I forgot to drop it once I left the infantry. What do you mean, counterfeit? I'll have you know that several ladies of New Orleans society found me quite authentic and charming. As an amusing sideshow, no doubt. Please be good enough to leave me to my appointment with the Dark Angel. Hey, that's an idea! What would you say if I could keep old Rattlebones from claiming you? No one has that power. You're a cruel man to even attempt to raise my hopes for your sick amusement. 
No, I'm serious. Do you want to live? What prize would you pay to escape death today? Anything, of course, but- Deal. Sit tight, Sally, and let me do everything. And afterwards, remember our deal. Haven't had a woman in a long time, and never one as pretty as you. Mr. Rattlebones, I've got you now! Hey? Clickety clack, get into my sack! You did it, Jack! You captured Death himself! And hey, I can move again! The paralysis is gone! How do you feel, girl? Perfect. Wonderful. Once more, I am the hero of the day, and now to claim my hero's reward. Yeah, I know what I have to do, and I won't go back on my bargain, but... Is there any possibility you'd be willing to bathe first? Anything for you, my sweet. Oh dear God above, this is a filthy thing you're making me do. Filthy... I feel so dirty. Am I dirty, Jack? Am I? I am dirty, aren't I, Jack? Call me a dirty girl, Jack. Call me a dirty girl! Oh, oh, do it! Call me a strumpet, a whore! Oh, I'm so bad! I'm so dirty! Jesus, God, I'm sorry. Can't you shut up for a moment? Long enough to let me finish! I'm gonna bust open just trying to keep up with you, woman! Oh, Jack! What a glorious world you've opened up for me! How long before you can go again? You're killing me. I need to sleep. If you still got so much energy left, go cook my dinner or sit breakfast now. Go slaughter something. I'll need a lot to replenish everything you've taken out of me. Go on. Quit pushing me. I'm going. Wake me when it's ready. Pig? Or beef or chicken. I'm not picky as long as there's lots of it. Come here, you. Got you. <coughs> Settle down, girl. It'll only hurt for a moment. Witchery is this? Jack? Jack? Wake up, Jack! Huh? Sally, what happened? Nothing will die, Jack. Come see. Come see for yourself. Hold on. Quit pulling on me, you dotty wench. See what I mean, darling? Oh, my. What have I done? And that's not all, love. We have visitors. And I think they're here to see you. Jack. Jack. What have you done, Jack? We were killed in the battle this morning, Jack, but we can't die. Why have you kept us from our reward, Jack? What have you done? This isn't my fault, boys. Not really, I just wanted to save the girl. Look at her. Wouldn't you want to keep her out of old Rattlebone's clutches if you could? Don't put this on me, Jack. I was ready to go to my sweet savior's bosom. You've destroyed the way of things, Jack. Wait, I think I can still put it right. Wait here. Don't move. I can fix this. All I need to do is... Come out of there, Mr. Bones. Hurry, Jack. More things are arriving. Horrible things. How did you do that to me? Don't get angry, sir. I can explain everything. 
Angry? Why would I be angry? That was the first day off I've ever had. It was wonderful. I feel so... rested. Then everything's okay between us? As long as you let me take a day off in your magic bag once every year or so. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some work to catch up on. But what about me? Am I to be taken now too? I'll give you another year together. That's the best I can do. One year. Remember. And oh, what a lovely year it will be. Won't we be happy, Jack, my love? Uh, sure, sweetheart. It'll be grand, but only... Yes, my darling. Could you take a bath first? But Jack lost both his sweetheart and the magic bag within a few weeks of that day. Lovely Sally ran off with a traveling preacher and a whiskey drummer. And the bag? Well, maybe that's a tale best left for another time. Here's a nasty little winter's tale. This is serious, Briar Rose. You fell asleep again, in the middle of Tiffany's. I couldn't help it, Big B. I pricked my finger on a diamond pin at the jewelry counter. Causing the entire sales floor to fall asleep with you? Customers and clerks alike? Unfortunately, that's the way the old enchantment works. First I prick my finger on something and fall asleep. Then everyone around me falls asleep. And then the thorn forest starts growing around whatever building I happen to be in. We got lucky this time. They think some kind of gas leak caused it. But we can't have incidents like this. Not out among the bloody Mondays. I don't think the enchantment cares where I am. Or amongst whom. I thought it was ended for all time back in the homelands when Prince Charming kissed me. But apparently all that does is reset the spell to its starting position. It's an endless cycle. Then you're just gonna have to stop pricking your fingers. You're still wealthy enough to get some workmen to go through your apartment and remove all the rough edges and sharp corners. And when you go out, wear gloves. Thick ones. That might work while winter lasts, but not when spring comes. Big B? Even then, rich people are supposed to have eccentricities. Let that be yours. Excuse me for interrupting, Sheriff, but Trusty John needs you outside. Christ above. What now? It's a Monday, gentlemen, loitering outside the gate, sir. So? We get Mondays passing through Fable Town all the time. They don't know this isn't part of their city. Except that this one asks for you by name. Elsewhere in the city. I want you out! Out of my apartment and out of my life! I'm already two steps ahead of you, Molly dear. While you were sleeping, I sent my luggage into storage. If nothing else over the years, I've learned to anticipate when a romance has run its natural course. Molly? Who's Molly? Oops. Slip of the tongue. I have to confess, I can never remember which pretty little girl I'm bunking with these days. Which one are you again? Daphne? Trish? I knew it! I knew you were sneaking other women in here while I was out, and I know you've been stealing money from me! Yes, I'm a terrible cad. You take care now, Betty, or Chrissy, or whoever you are. Okay, Prince Charming, where to now? And back in Fable Town. Okay, what's your story, fella? Uh, Mr. Wolf? That depends. Who the hell are you and what do you want? Oh, I know it's you, all right. I know all about you. I I'm Tommy Sharp. I write the Sharp Comments column for the Daily News. Perhaps you've read it? Nope. I read the post. And you're already beginning to bore me. Why don't you say what you want to say and move along? Fine. 
Then here's my business in a nutshell. For the past few years, I've been working on a story about your underground community. I've put in the hours, checked and double-checked the research, and done the legwork. How lovely for you. I know all your secrets. Then you're way ahead of me. And as a journalistic courtesy, I've decided to finally reveal myself. Come out of the shadows, so to speak. In order to give you an opportunity to respond before I print my story. Respond to what? So far you've only babbled nonsense. Take that evasive tact if you like, but I know what I know. You're a community of immortals. Probably. Get that thing out from under my nose. In any case, you've been alive for centuries. Tucked away in this quiet little corner of the city. Your group has owned everything on this block since back when New York was still called New Amsterdam. I've got records, I've compiled personal histories, I've dug up pictures of a number of you dating back to the very beginnings of photographic technology, and not one of you has aged a day. So let me guess, this story of yours is going to be published between the big Elvis is an Alien expose and the latest installment of I Had Goat Boy's Love Child. Mock me if you like, but we both know I'm going to win a Pulitzer Prize with this. Maybe even the Nobel Prize for being the first to come with unimpeachable proof of the existence of your kind. And just what do you imagine my kind is? Vampires, of course. Seriously? A group of immortals with fantastic powers passing themselves off as normal humans? I've read Anne Rice. I've seen the movies. It all fits. Oh my god. You are serious. You provided the final convincing proof. I followed you on one of your after-hours jaunts to Central Park. I watched you strip down, then assume animal form for a midnight run. That's what vampires can do, right? You didn't see me, did you? Thanks to my telephoto lens, I was able to stay far away. And yet you were dumb enough to get within easy reach of me now? Only in the daytime when you have no power over me. You can't mesmerize me now. You can't hurt me. Um, can you? You're insane. Play it that way if you insist, but you don't have long to get your side of the story on record before I publish. Shove off, clown. Here's my card, Mr. Wolf. Call me if you change your mind. And don't think for a moment you can catch up to me after the sun goes down. I know how it works. I'll be safely home by then and vampires can't enter my personal residence without my invitation. I'm not afraid of you. I'm really not. Later that same day. We've got trouble. In the Woodlands' rather bizarre business office. If Sharp's expose is published, our life here is effectively over. Even if no one official believes the story, enough Mundy kooks and goth freak vampire wannabes will. So what's the problem? We should kill this guy. Just like that last poor bastard who found out about us in the 20s. I know how to make it look like a suicide. I've considered that, Bluebeard. I wish we could. And I almost did it myself out in the street. But we're in the information age, and this Tommy Sharp character is too well known. Everything's interconnected now. Even if we kill him in a way no one suspects as murder, it's no guarantee his story won't come out. Shouldn't Miss White be here? No. Despite my preferences, this may end up requiring some dirty business. As long as she's still convalescing, I want Snow kept out of it. So what do we do? You look like you already have a plan in mind, Wolf. Possibly. We need to move fast. Tonight. But first we have to find out where Prince Charming is camping these days. And we'll need Briar Rose's help. Sleeping Beauty? Why? What do you have in mind? A scheme worthy of you, Jack. Except this one has a possibility of success. When you tried your dot-com scam last year, just how good did your computer skills get? In Bluebeard's apartment. I don't care what the wolf has in mind, we need to prepare a more dire resolution to this problem. Just in case. If your personal history isn't entirely fabricated, Jack, you've undertaken dangerous business before. If the tales are to be believed, you were once a giant killer of some renown. You're no stranger to the precise and willful application of deadly force. So what? All of us have varied careers in our past. It's one of the byproducts of being long-lived. 
These weapons are clean, untraceable. Take one. Carry it in an outside pocket where you can get at it quickly, to use it or dispose of it as needed. If we can resolve this Bigby's way, all to the good. But if the wolf's plan fails, we need to be ready to step in. Pardon the intrusion, sir. Mr. Wolf is ready to go. We're on our way. And so... Head downtown towards Tribeca. Sharp lives in one of those ritzy apartment buildings off Hudson Square. Everyone know their parts. Prince Charming and Briar Rose, you're up first. Let me help you, my dear. This snow makes for treacherous footing. And you would know treacherous when you see it, dear. Being so personally experienced at it. Now, now, darling, this is no time to dredge up the past. Remember, we're a deliriously happy Monday couple. Two of this town's seemingly endless supply of bubble-headed socialites. I'll do my part, darling. But keep your hands to yourself. Good evening, sir, ma'am. This is quite a spot of weather we're having, eh? Thank you, my good man. After you, Hortiens, my dove. You're not residents here, are you? No, of course not. We live someplace nice. We're here for the big party. What party would that be, sir? Good question. Who are we seeing tonight, sweetheart? How should I know? Who can keep track? Well, I can't let you go up until I know who you're here to see. I have to call ahead. This is a security residence. I'm growing bored, Mortimer. Do something. Dash it all, honey bear. I must have left the invitations out in the coach. Just sit here for a moment, and I'll fetch them. Drink up, be merry, and I'll be back in two shakes. She's in. Good. Now we wait. Then can we wait back in the car? In case you hadn't noticed, it's winter out here. When can we go in? Not for a while yet. Be patient, Boy Blue. We have to give Briar Rose's enchantment time to do its work. As its effects spread out, everyone in the building should fall asleep. Every person in every apartment. Along with their dogs, cats, gerbils, and parakeets. Hello? Beth? Are you still there? I thought you were cold. Bluebeard won't let me smoke in the limo. Okay, bum a butt off you. When are you going to learn to support your own filthy habits? It's been almost an hour now. Can we go in yet? No. If we go in too soon, we'll fall under the sleeping spell ourselves. How will we know when it is safe, then? We'll know because I'll know. Then I'll tell the rest of you. This is not job really think we're vampires. Apparently. That's kinda cool. If we were vampires, we'd all be rich. How so? Think it though, vampires make more vampires just by sucking people's blood, right? Do you know how much these Mundy fucks would pay to someone who could make them immortal? Hey, I just thought- Forget it, Jack. Forget what? You just realized you could make use of the same old pictures of yourself and the rest of us that Sharp found to convince gullible rich Mundies that you are a vampire and cheat them out of their money by promising to make them immortal. Ow! I'm way ahead of you, Jack. I always will be. After all these years, I know how your mind works. Try it and I'll lock you up for a century. 
Damn it, Bigby. Shut up, Jack. The thorn growing stage has started. It's time to go in. Sharp lives on the seventh floor. Jack and Boy Blue are with me. Bring the tools. Flycatcher, you and the prince find the security office. The security camera's feed is being recorded, and we'll want to take the tapes with us when we go. Bluebeard mans the door. Find the keys and lock it tight. No one comes in until we're done. Does anyone else feel like we're in a caper flick? This is the right door. Get open, quick! Don't miss. Woohoo! We're in! Jack, find his computer and get to work. He's probably using one of the bedrooms as an office. Blue, find Mr. Sharp and make sure he's asleep. Then help me toss the place. We need to look at every photograph and document in here. Roger Dodger, Sheriff. Work fast, but work smart, too. Don't cut corners. And sing out if you start getting sleepy. We can't afford to be caught here. Look at you, Tommy. Please, God, let there be a camera here. We need a picture of this. I found Sharp, but you gotta come see this for yourself. Don't bother me, sonny boy. I'm working. Time creeps by, and the building continues to sleep, except for a handful of late intruders. Did we get everything pertaining to us? I think so. He had a complete darkroom full of all sorts of pictures of us. I've got good news and bad news, Bigby. Shit. What now? I successfully killed every file he had, no problemo, but I looked through his email records. He backed up all of his work by sending it out. Out? What do you mean, out? Out where? There are secure places on the internet you can send stuff. Files. Anything you want to protect from people like me. It looks like Sharp made frequent use of these systems. So we've wasted all this effort? We can't get to those duplicate files? Now without putting a better computer hacker than me to work for a week or more. So Sharp wins. We're screwed. It depends. I've got an alternative plan, but it depends on how evil you're prepared to get. Look at this. Bigby Wolf and his intrepid team of fables are in the midst of water-getting Tommy Shop's apartment. Step away from the man, Bluebeard. And put that damned gun away. Why? Since we can't be certain we've destroyed all of Sharp's files, we need to implement a more drastic solution. So let's kill him and be done with it. Aren't you supposed to be downstairs watching the door? Maybe I didn't make myself clear. Back off. Or I'll kill you. Show some backbone for once, Wolf. Your non-violent plan didn't work, so now we're forced to fall back on more extreme, but more certain, measures. I'm willing to do it, so you don't have to worry about getting your own paws dirty. You can even look away if you're really so squeamish. Maybe we should get out of the way. Yes, Jack. Maybe you should. Don't bother. Since none of you has the stomach for rough business, I won't force it. We'll do it Bigby's way, assuming he even has an alternate plan. Actually, it's my plan? Then it's sure to succeed, just like every other scheme you've concocted over the years. Cut it out. We've got a lot of work to do and not much time in which to do it. Jack, you and Boy Blue get Tommy Sharp ready for travel. Bluebeard, get back down to the lobby, where you were supposed to be all along. The entire population of the city could be down there by now. And I'd still be there if I had any confidence in you. So you've managed to tell us ad nauseum. What happened to you since the exile? When did they tame you? Or was your formerly savage nature always counterfeit? A combination of bluster and deft public relations. 
Don't push this any further. Or you'll rip my throat out, or kill me, or blah blah blah. You've said it all before, Wolf. Your constant or elses have grown tedious. Hasn't anyone ever told you that threats lose their impact when so often repeated without ever actually acting on one of them? I haven't needed to act because you've always backed down. And always will. Sure, you're a terror when gutting unarmed brides on their wedding night, or gunning down an unconscious man on a toilet. You're a coward, Bluebeard, hiding behind a lifetime of wealth and privilege. Now, unless you're prepared to throw down. I thought so, tough guy. When you get done pissing yourself with fear, tuck tail and do what I told you to do. Obey me. So what are you waiting for? Pull up his pants so we can get out of here. I'm not touching his pants, you do it! Time to wrap it up, kids. We've already been here too long. Make sure we've got everyone and everything we're taking with us. All we need now is for some Mundy cop to come along and see us hauling bodies out of a building. How long are these thorns going to continue to grow? As long as Briar Rose remains asleep, I think. Did she gain weight since the homelands? Flycatcher, as soon as we get back to Fabletown, round up a work crew to come back here and get rid of these thorns before they grow much further. Why me, Big B? Because you're the only one I trust not to fuck it up. Because we can't allow the Mundies to wake up and find their building covered in magical thorns. Or because I said so. Take your pick. Grimble, this is Big B Wolf. Run up to Pinocchio's apartment and get him for me. If he's asleep, wake him up. If he's out, go find him. He likes to drink at the Brandstock. Yes, it's important. Get moving. Will the people in the building wake up now that we've taken Briar Rose away? Maybe. I don't know. It shouldn't matter though, as long as this Tommy Sharp character stays asleep. You look sad, Mr. Bluebeard. Do you feel sad? Did something bad happen? Shut up, you ridiculous inbred cretin. Time passes. Amnesty or not, he hasn't changed. No one changes his basic nature. Dressing him up in human skin makes no difference. He's still a predatory mongrel beast. Making him our sheriff only means that he gets to have his teeth around everyone's throats at once. I won't stand for it any longer. Other arm now, sir. What will you do, sir? Remove him. Once and for all. You're back in bum now, sir. Call it a community service. Okay. We've done what we need to with Tommy Sharp. Let's wake her up. My pleasure. I was waiting for this part. All of the Mundies on the block complained about the chainsaws, but it just kept saying municipal business over and over, like you told me to. Anyway, we got it all chopped down before sunrise. But the thorns keep trying to grow back. So I left most of the crew down there to keep on top of it. And came back to report in. But they keep sending guys around demanding to see our work orders. Not now, Flycatcher. Good job, but not now. Why is it taking so long? Why isn't she waking up? Um, I was afraid of this. The enchantment was very specific. She can only be woken by a kiss from someone who loves her, with true love. Way back when, that described me. I always truly love a woman when I'm first chasing her. But I'm only good at the chase. My love quickly faded once I had to settle down to the tough business of actually living with her. I'm just no damn good at the happily ever after part. Then what do we do? How do we wake her? I don't know. Find some prince who truly loves her. How? We need her awake now. We don't have time to go looking for... 
Excuse me, Mr. Wolf. I could try. Not now, Fly. This is grown-up talk. We need to be serious now. But I am serious. You need a prince, and I am a prince. Maybe not a very handsome one, but I'm awfully fond of Miss Briar. I mean, she's... I take one look at her and I want to. Who wouldn't? What the hell? Why not? Give it a shot. Are you out of your mind? He's an imbecile! Let him try. What could it hurt? All be damned. It worked. What happened? Um, how did it all turn out? Why does my mouth taste like bugs? Can't talk now. Sharp will be waking. Time to wake up, Tommy boy. Oh, God, my head. What happened to me? I feel like someone slipped me a Mickey. Which is more or less what we did. Oh my god, it's you! How did you get me? What did you do? Here, look at yourself in this. Look at your neck. What did you sick creatures do to me? You figured out we're vampires, Tommy. You know what we did. We drank your blood. Oh dear lordy. Not all that much. Not enough to change you into one of us. Relax. You won't be growing fangs or avoiding Italian food. But now, we'll be able to keep tabs on you, and control you if we have to. You've seen the movies. You know how that works. I only wanted a big story. I didn't mean anything. You tried to sell us out for a few days of fleeting notoriety. We don't allow that sort of thing. What are you planning to do with me? Nothing. As long as you behave. But if you expose us, we'll make you do something fatal to yourself. Hang yourself, slit your wrists in the bath, whatever strikes our fancy at the time. We've tasted your blood. You won't be able to resist us. I wasn't trying to hurt you people. I liked you. I did. I've been getting closer and closer to you for three years, learning your stories and relationships. But it was such a big story. It's not a story at all now. And Sharpie, if you've already sent it to someone, if any part of your story gets out, even from someone else, we'll do more than kill you. We'll destroy your reputation. We'll make your kids, your family, and both your ex-wives detest you. And all your loyal readers, too. W why how? What are you going to do? Look at these. Keep them if you like. We've got copies. Oh no. What have you done? What did you make me do? That old boy in the pictures with you is one of us. Immortal. Over three centuries old. But he looks no more than eight or nine. Especially the way we dress him up. I never did this. I'm not... I couldn't have. What will people think of you when these get out? Even in our libertine era, this sort of conduct is nothing short of disgusting. Here's his extensive, detailed forensic interview with the child psychologist. Two solid hours worth. You'll especially love the part where he points out on his favorite teddy bear all the inappropriate places you've touched him. He's very convincing. You can't do this to me. This kind of thing, even an accusation that's later proved entirely false, ruins people for the rest of their lives. Yes, it does. But if you're ever tempted to feel sorry for yourself, remember that you did your part to create this culture. Welcome to the world you made, you pathetic little media fuck. What do I have to do? Nothing. Go back to your life and forget all about us. Forever. Make sure no one ever finds out about us, even after your natural death. If you care about how you're remembered. Come in here, Jack. 
After this piece of shit gets dressed, escort him out and put him in a cab. Make sure he takes the videotape and all of his dirty pictures with him. Sure thing, Sheriff. You'll want to take a good look at those, Tommy. Every time you're tempted to play journalist again. If you publish, we publish. Simple as that. And at that moment... Gold-plated moorwood and Berman bathroom fixtures. Venetian marble tiles and countertop. Etruscan statuary. Song Dynasty ceramics. Oh, Briar, my lost love. You have done well for yourself. I don't think you should be getting up yet, Briar dear. You need to lie down until you feel better again. I'm okay. Just a little disoriented is all. My sleeping spells sometimes leave me feeling this way. That's fine. You're safe and at home and in good hands. We'll just sit here until it passes. Why are you still here? Someone had to stay to look after you. Why are you smiling like that? No reason. Just an amusing little something someone told me recently. I got all the security tapes. Now we just have to wait for them to finish upstairs. Look at her, Fly. She always did look her best when she was sleeping. She is real pretty, Mr. Charming. And rich, too. That always helps. Seriously? Briar Rose got out with her fortune intact. I never heard that. Nah. She showed up here as poor as the rest of us, but that didn't last long. Remember all those fairy blessings she got in her christening day? One of them was that she'd always be wealthy. Within a year of arriving here, she made a killing in the stock market. Big magic, you know. Do tell. If she gave it all away today, she'd probably win the lottery tomorrow. Who's she seeing these days? Why are you suddenly being so nice to me? What are you up to? It's not all that sudden, dear. We just haven't socialized since escaping the homelands. I know we ended our marriage badly, and it was entirely my fault. I was unfit for the holy state of matrimony. But since then, I've been infected by the spirit of the general amnesty. We've each taken a public stand on the side of forgiveness and a new clean slate. But that doesn't apply to- and you are to be admired most of all because you and I both know you've had the most to forgive. I have to confess, I find myself in awe of your generosity of heart. But- My thoughts exactly. But I can't just blithely accept your forgiveness and move on without any act of contrition on my part. The old Prince Charming might have been able to, but that man no longer exists. I'm resolved to earn what you've so freely given me. And as my penance, I'm going to stay here with you. No, not romantically. Those days are past us. I no longer deserve those glories. So I'll stay here platonically, in one of the other bedrooms, and take care of you. See you through your spells, for months, years, or decades. As long as it takes to work off my debt. But... Days pass. You let him move in with you? It's not like that. He's in a guest room. The biggest one, I'll bet. Can we please get to why you asked me here, Mr. Wolf? I'm just catching up on some paperwork. And one detail nagged me about your incident back in Tiffany's. We had some trouble waking you last week after the Sharp Affair. But I never found out how they woke you then. In that public store and how no one noticed anything odd about it. One of the, uh, policemen who responded to the situation, he had a police dog. A very affectionate police dog. I woke up to him lapping at my face. And don't tell me. The dog's name was Prince. Repeat any of this, and I'll hate you forever. And later that evening in a remote corner of New York Central Park. Thank you for meeting me on such short notice, Mr. Sharp. 
I don't have much of a choice, do I? You guys say jump, and I ask how high. Exactly right. I thought we should have an update on the state of your notes, files, and other evidence pertaining to my community. It's destroyed. All of it. No notes, no traces, nothing. You can search me or my place anywhere you like. Oh, that won't be necessary, Thomas. I believe you, and we'll all sleep more comfortable at night without that ugly business hanging over our heads any longer.